Good morning, traders. Welcome to the daily webinar. Just a quick reminder to everyone in my group, please register for the, the, the London and New York and the public uh, link, the one we'll be using for the public today. Uh, to my YouTube viewers, if you registered for that one already, which means an entire week, we'll be allowing you to access our trading room for free during the New York session and during the London session, which is now, now in London. It's what time? Let me just check the time very quickly. In London, it's about 6, 5.30. So in the next three, two and a half hours, you will be able to join us at 7.45 London time. You can join us free. It's open to the public. Please share it. Invite a friend, anybody who would like to see what we do in our trading room. All right. So join us there uh, for the live session in London and New York. If you're seeing this webinar for the first time and you don't know about that one, go watch the previous webinar, that the previous recording that we did, the previous video on YouTube. Or the link to it will also be in this description. I'll ask Victor to put a link. The link in this will be in the description of this one. So you can register there as well. All right, let's go. Um, let's start. So that's about it. By the way, if you're celebrating Diwali, happy Diwali to you. And let's go. Let's start now. Dollar index. So on the dollar index, it did what we expected to do, which is when we, we tagged the top, we expected to come down back. We were looking at the bigger picture. The bigger pictures we are here, right? So we kind of break that top. We will go with this is the con this could be still partial consolidation, right? Just remember how patterns develop. So I wouldn't be surprised if they actually go back up, making this a flat of its own, and then go back up to the top, then come back for this big impulse. That, that is an option, right? This would become a flat in the middle. So you get one, two, three. Then we come back here and then we go, right? That's an option, the first one. The second option is that, well, this is one, two, three. I don't like this to be two by itself. Time-wise, it's too small. So I'm thinking if that is two, then this would just continue to drop to the bottom here and then go. So what we need to do, look for if we get sell setups or if we get buy setups, either we will take. We're within the consolidation, the possibility for both sides are open right now. For the sell setup, I think it might be gone. We did have a flat and a very nice flat here. And that just dropped and break the low reverse. So if we get buy setup here, we're taking it to retest that top. We're going to make the assumption again that this was all, that this is a flat of its own. This here is a flat of its own. We can either take it to this and make this all the correction, which would be sent. It makes sense. One, one, two, three, go back up. So you could have a contracting flat in the middle there. That is quite possible. You want to pull it to this level, also makes sense, right? You could go with one, two, three, and this is a sharp drop. Either will work. It doesn't matter which one. And I think that is a flat for upside, right? I might be wrong on that one, but I think we will go with that for now because we barely tip the top. We'll go with expanding flat in the middle, right? And the time-wise for this is way too short to be the correction of this impulse. So I think we might go with this and there's a higher probability for upside. And it's pretty simple. You've got an impulse going up after the smaller flat. I think we can all see that. It kind of reversed as a good sign. So we want a little consolidation here. Well, it's just starting. Let it make some consolidation here. And if it stays in this range, we buy. What if it actually comes back down? Can we look at this now as a much more bigger flat for downside? Well, the sell will only be under here with a flag. Right by rule, we wouldn't sell inside of this piece because the range is small. You might not get a good risk to reward trade. But if it breaks this low and do this, then yes. And then not only would you not get a good risk to reward trade, you don't know for a fact that it's dropping. If you sell a small flag here, all it can do is drop here and go back up and we're looking for a buy. So the small flags at the top, they are pretty dangerous because you don't know for a fact they're going down. If they do come and break out, make flags, we can sell to continue to the bottom. The range to the bottom is a bigger one, right? So we're open to both sides right now. I would leave this the way it is. I think we'll go with that as a very nice expanding flat for upside. And there's a higher probability for upside right now. I think there should be a 70% balance rate going up to four to 30 downside. So let's see. Silver. Okay. So we never broke the low. We came here and we actually went up back, which is strange. I thought they will drop break the low first while they're going up. Can we look at this as some kind of a bigger flat? Yeah, you can make an argument for that. You'd have to go with an expanding flat in here. And there's a chance this would either continue to go or drop now. If dollar index goes back up, this drop one more. We'll go with a running with a flat like this, which is normal. I'll leave it like this for now. Right? If if this consolidates at the top here, we're going to put this, we're going to take this out from here. 
we're going to go with this flat. And we put it like this because I would go with an expanding flat in the middle. So you understand what I'm trying to put, right? So for now, we would leave this like this because it looks still looks downside. That pullback by itself doesn't mean anything. It can still drop. We have had that many times. So what we need to see is what we get here. We get a flag, we sell, we get a flat, we buy. So it's open to both ways. If we get a flag here, we sell this. If it goes up back and make a flat, we buy it. Now, and let me take a pause here for a second. If you're watching this video for the first time, and maybe you've never seen my video before, you're going to say, well, he just said it's a buy and it's a sell. And I pretty much understand what you said, or, or I understand the way you understand it, because you do not understand how wave analysis works. I would invite you to join us. You will actually see what we do with this trade live today. And you would understand why both sides are possible. And you would understand what the patterns are going to develop in either side. So you would know that it's not, it's going to go up, it's going to go down. But it depends on what pattern is created here at the moment. At the moment, we can even put a cell setup here. Just in case it's not going to get bigger than that. Right? You can go with a cell setup under the low. The impulse is pretty sharp. You don't want it to get back to the top. Get back to the top, you take it off. If it starts to drop from here, that's three hours, I think. Yep. One, two, three hours. Yep, we can go with that. Three hours, small flag. If they want to drop, they can drop it. So it's a sell setup as of now. I'll put an aggressive sell. And it becomes a buy if it comes back to the top. Because it will go down, but we'll pull the sell off. We don't want to be tagged and then watch it go up from there. I just like this, but this one, I think we closed it for break even. So let's see, because I was in front of the news. We, we were trying to sell it and it didn't go, so we did, didn't get into it. Let's go. Gold. Okay, gold went up. We knew gold was going to go up. We didn't think it was going to go that high, but it actually break out. So gold might also give us a sign what we're doing. Are we going down for one more? Or are we going up, right? Now, I don't think this is the equivalent of this. The probability in gold right now is much more to the upside. To come back to that level. So if this goes back to the top, they've come here, this will absolutely be a buy to get to that level. Right, we will we will come back to break this top and for a flat that is going to drop one more. Right? But the question is, it, can it come back here and then go back up? Do we have anything sharp to put this with? Not really. You can still make, maybe in the future we're going to have one, or you might want to make an argument of whether this would still work as a flat. But we can go with that as a flat. Also makes sense. Then we'll decide where to put this one. Maybe with this one or maybe with that one. If that happens. If this starts to drop, we're going to go with this flat. But the entry because that is a possible flat. That's a very nice running flat as far as I'm concerned. Pretty similar to this one. Except for this sharp piece in here. And that is the piece that's throwing it off. So we'll put it like this for now. And we'll see if it's upside or downside. Sorry for that. Thank you so much. And we'll decide on this after the fact because you can't tell whether you can com combine it with that one or whether they're going to be something in the future. But in terms of trading, that is irrelevant. In terms of trading, you have three-hour consolidation here. If you get two or three more hours right here, that's a sell. You can put the entry order in here right now and then go for the sell. As long as the flag stays here, it's a sell setup. If it goes higher, we take this off. We look for a flat and then we look for upside. So... This, this is actually both sides. We can put an aggressive cell right now. Nothing here. Take this off. This is making the deeper consolidation we anticipated to make, which is something like this, most likely. And it should probably go down more. I don't see this going up a lot more, but we'll see. But this was a cell we had that we took out of already. Euro. Okay, so you did broke the loan, go back up. We, we expected that. This is not new. We weren't, I don't think we, one person only sold. We weren't aiming in the cell. We break the top and we are now in this one. This is the structure we're in now. Right? We got to move up. We got a big flat here. We got, these are smaller ones. We get a sharp move to the top. And the question is, well, what next from this point? From this point, it still looks downside. Right? If you're looking at it from here, I still think all this consolidation here still looks downside. And since we're in the channel, this might be one equivalent to this, right? So you got to move down. You got a big one. You got to move down. This is relatively sharp, but it was a sharper move there. Remember at the top there, or this could come here, go back up there, make a sharp one here and continue to go down. 
So which side now? Same thing. We're open to the same thing. Is it the sell or is it the buy? Well, the buy would come later. I would be careful of selling this because remember, we're still in this thing. So they might, you know, they could even come, but come like this, go back up, make a new high and then drop. Or we're open to that. It might just, if it makes a flag here, we will buy it, but we'll be out with a lot of caution. Unlike gold or silver, we don't have a guarantee that this takes off. Right, there's no, this is the sharp move. This is the sharp move. There's no guarantee this thing takes off. If we get this sell, it will be a better option for us. So you have to wait on the one hour. You do have some sideways here. Let's see what it looks like in the 15. Yeah, it doesn't look good in the 15. This deep pullback here definitely looks more upside than downside. So I think we'll wait here a little on this. Don't put anything as maybe in the next two, three hours, we'll know what to do with it. Pang broke out. It's coming back down. I still think we're open. We expected that one, but we're we are open to whether this will be part of this in a bigger pattern, right? Can we look at this as a flat? One, two, three, come back here and then go back up. I think that makes sense. That would make a lot of sense, actually, if it, if it ends up like that, if it ends up like that. So I'm not sure which one is it. We're still in this consolidation. I still think we're in a B part of the consolidation. We haven't broken this top. So there's a good chance we might go break the top and then drop. That's one option. Or we come back down here, go break the top and then drop. So I would prefer if they actually come back here first and then go break the top and then come back here because this would make a lot of sense. Not only would it make sense, it would make the pattern the way we like to see them, right? This would be perfect patterns. We get this, you get this, and then total upside. This would be a huge move up. Because remember, this is the impulse that came in from the all-time low. So with a flat like this on a daily, that would be a really good one. So we could focus on this, but you right now we have to let this complete what it's doing. Can we get a sell setup? Let's see in the 15. Again, it, it's pretty much like the euro with that sharp pullback, which is not a good sign for a sell. It could be a sell, but it's not a good sign. You're coming here. You're going to get a flat there. You have to at least come back one more down. We'd assume that. And then we look for a buy setup. So there might be, depending on what the, how high this goes, it's going to come back down one more. It has this one in. And then from there, we'll see which where it, I think it's going to be most likely a buy. We'll, we'll see. Maybe silver and gold will go back up more consolidated, become buy setups as well. Uh, Aussie. Okay, Aussie's definitely sell. Aussie just played out exactly like, like clock down here, up there, and then from there, it should be total downside. Remember why we kept it for upside because this is an, a very low in the daily structure, right? The big flat is always, we always assume that the big flat will go down. But because we're at a pretty low in the daily, it could be they do make a big flat, but they go up. But in this case, they're telling us, no, we're going down. So our probability is that the downside was a bigger one, and we think we got this right. Here's the good thing you see that sharp move there now with this air? Although it went up deep into that, guess what happened when this comes down and do this? Running flat. Sell setup. This is pretty easy, right? The only way that changes is if this works its way up back to the top there, come back here and go, and then we'll go with expanding flat, regular flat, with a well, running flat because this one is at the bottom, thing, and then upside. As of now, that's a really good sell setup. You want to make sure it doesn't get much bigger than this. So we're going to work to make sure this up move is not much bigger than this one, right? Because if it is, then it's trouble. But once it gets there, you can put a cell set up. We can put an entry for a cell. It's not ready. I'll just put it on so that you understand why we're looking for. And we'll put a cell set up in the making. That would take a while to change into a buy. And it's, it's going to, you know, it will have to go up, come down back, and then go. So we can change that maybe in New York session if that happens. New Zealand. Okay, this is the same thing. And this one has an expanding flat. So the probability of this, actually, this is a nice buy here. The probability of this totally going up is possible. And this looks more likely upside because although it has a running flat, the pullback is way, way, way back at the top. And this is not such a deep drop. So they can just do this, come back here, and this would be a perfect flat for upside. Now, the question is, can it go from this one? I don't think so. I don't think we need to rush to buy this. If this trip, trip a little lower, then we would assume that, you know, that deep pullback would have little influence. It's still going to go down. 
So if this turns out into a flag, well, better not sell this one. We have a better sell on this on the gold and the silver. The impulses in the gold and the silver do not have that big pullback at the top there. See, they literally drop, drop. So there's no big pullback in this. So if they become sell setup, these would be better sell setups. I put it higher. These would be better sell setups. No pullback to the top. Unlike Europong and Aussie and New Zealand, which has that pullback. And that is what makes the sell difficult. But in the case of Aussie, it's a little lower. It's a little lower. And this, this is a deep running flat. So this would be a good sell setup. This one would be, I'll probably skip the sell. We'll wait. Let's go and CAD. CAD, just like everything else, these were the patterns. Aussie, New Zealand, and CAD, we had those three patterns. So they were perfect. They actually dropped, come back here. Question, is it total downside or is it up? It could be both, right? With a big flat like that at the top there, you could assume that this is a one, two, three, and we go back up. It's kind of weird, this piece. They made this big flat. They actually struggle up slowly. Then they make another big flat and they go back up again. If that happens, we're channeling. We start a channel. Really big channel, right? Up move, correction, up move, correction, up move. We'll consider we're channeling. So you can trade it back to the top of the channel, get the hell out, wait for this not a big one here, and then another up move, which means in this range we can trade. This was a tradable range for us. So let's see if we get a buy setup, we'll go with it. Nope, like all the Forex pairs, you have exactly the same thing. You have a deep pullback for the first impulse, and that is not good. First impulse in the B wave. So this comes back here and go back up, that's a sell setup. We don't have a buy setup as yet. Maybe it's just one drop. It's possible they could also do just a single drop here and go back up. That's possible. But if we get a sell setup from here to the bottom, we can get break even out of the trade. We will take the trade in case it continues to drop. CAD is at a very high point, and if they want to correct deep, they can do that. Swiss. Okay, Swiss is looking good for downside because this is happening. There is no pattern to this. It's just was crawling up, crawling up, crawling up, and we have to get this one, right? So that is the one we're looking for, and it seems like we might get it. I don't see any reason not to go for a sell setup here in a big impulse like that, so let's see. Okay, well, we had the flat there already. That's a problem. We already had this. We dropped, we broke this, and we are getting this. See? That is the problem. The problem is if you get this here, you go up. Even if you go up for one more and then come down, but you go up. So this is a buy setup and it's an active buy right now. But it's in the one hour. Yeah, that's about six hours. Considering we already made that flat there. So this is a good buy, put an entry above the top. Let's see if we can get it lower. You can get it a little lower, not necessarily need to be that aggressive, but you can put the entry here for this one. Right, this is the last impulse coming down. The only way we change that is if this comes back to the bottom here, right? If this like this one here, right? Like it works its way to the bottom. If this works its way to the bottom here, then we assume they go back up and drop and this would be a flat of its own. And beats me why we have two flat just next to each other. So you drop, you make a flat, you drop, you make another flat. What the hell is this doing? That's not even a channel. That's just a cluster of flats, which, which would be pretty strange, right? When you get... The, it could be that all of those put together is making a bigger running flat, right? When you get that, then we will expect, we put all of this together and see if this is making a bigger running flat here just for downside. Because a big running flat like that, it's not even a channel. Channels are a little more distinct, like the one we show, right? This is, this is just, so we'll see. Right now, I'll go with the buy setup. Put an entry order for the buy, and we will change that. If it, if it breaks out, it's a good move. You can get break even. So it breaks out like this to come back. We can get break even. Yen. Yen has a buy setup. Amazing with this trade. I don't know how many of you put it on on Friday, but remember the last thing I said on Friday is that if this cluster, we were in the five minutes, and I said, if this thing actually stays at the bottom half of this, come back here, go back and say, that's a good sell setup. Put it in three. Any one of you who did that did excellent, right? Great job. It went, if you need to close it here, out of panic, it's no problem. If you put it to break even, you probably would have closed it somewhere here or somewhere here, but you would have closed it in, in this cluster, if not in one of the, those two small clusters. Any, any way you did, it could have been perfect. Now we have a perfect flat. We have one, two, three, and we get a, a pullback with a flag here. Now, remember why these are happening, right? 
we spoke about that why those are happening and they could keep happening for a while so these this was the first kind of sharp one that shows the intention they, they want to push it down there were a few more but they weren't that sharp they were like attempts but these were really very sharp this one this one this these two big ones on friday friday was a good time friday afternoon is a good time if you want to move the market in your direction to use less money to pulse it away but the, those those were never successful they become successful after a period of time like you've got to have about 10 of those sometime i remember when they wanted to make it weak when it was really getting strong and i think it was like about a 10th attempt before it actually start moving 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 but in every attempt, sometimes this becomes much bigger. So in future attempts, it become bigger. Now that makes your buying really, really dangerous. Remember this buy here, I warned if you're buying this, it's a buy, but you gotta be careful, right? You buy this, you make sure you get out of the thing. Don't even put the stop or break even. Take profit here. You buy this one, take profit here. You buy this one, move your stop very tight, right? It, it pulls back like this, close the trade. Whatever, because the risk becomes very, very strong. Now, in this case, you might be lucky. You might only be taken out here. But if this had dropped like this and you had a stop here and it was a single drop, you would be taken out to the bottom of it. All right. So if you are risking 1% in a trade there, you can imagine what would happen to your account when they take you out. And that is possible that in a single drop, the next one could happen like that. Now, there's a buy setup here. Again, the same risk, the same problem. Right? Do you want to take the chance of buying this after they just did this? Right? And we understand why that is being done. That's pure manipulation. If that was regular trading, this was a perfect buy. Now, it might go up, and there's a very good chance it might work its way up like this, but as soon as it breaks the topper, so there's a good chance you get another one. Now, that, like I said previously, and I warned you of these coming. Don't say you weren't told that you know those things could happen. We start to see the first one and we start taking the warning that be careful. It's a buy setup, but you got to be careful. I'll say the same thing. It's a buy setup. You got to be careful. Really, really careful. Euro yen. Okay, we've got a perfect flat here too. You want to buy something? Don't buy the, the Euro yen and the dollar yen. Buy the Aussie yen and the New Zealand yen. All right, perfect flat. Could go one more up. Yes, should go at least to break this top. And then from there, we'll start to look for sell setups. If you want to buy, you have a perfect buy setup right now. Literally, you're in this sideways move. It could come down a little more, and I think it should come down a little more, but then you're in a sideways move. Pong in. I think they all have the same thing, right? In this case, this one, you notice, didn't break, they break this low. It's going up. So this one belongs to this, this flat, which means that we're going to go up, but with, with a lot of caution because we have this one hanging. Up, move, sharp one. This is going to go. Drop again, make a flat tear, probably go again, and then any big drop could come after that. Swiss yen. Okay. Same thing here. We thought the big move to the downside will start because we are in a big move. That is this big move here to the downside needs to happen. Instead, we drop, drop, and we're going back. So we made another flat. We got a big flat here. We went up. We got another big flat here. Move this a little. This is another big flat. They all have a big flat here. So we're likely going up one more. Yeah, we're going to go break the top and then look for sell setups again. It will likely break this top and maybe even break the bigger top for a big. If it breaks that bigger top, we'll, we'll have a really, really serious problem. Because it means this will go back up one more. And the only way it can go back up one more when it comes down here would be if the Swiss starts to drop really bad. So let's say this goes up there, break that up and start to drop. This could be a yen movement. But for it to go back up, that will have to be mostly Swiss. Yen consolidation, Swiss upside. Swiss downside, sorry. So let's see. Right now it's going up. There's, I don't think this buy is even worth taking. You'll have to put a stop here. You'll have to put an entry. All they need to do is break the stop. Let them go break the top and we look for sell setups. New Zealand, yen. if you want to buy, this is a buy setup possible because we know this has at least one more impulse to get to that top. And then from there, it's downside, right? So we have one, two, three, go break that top and then come back down, put it in the daily. Once we break that top, if they want to drop, it's okay. We're all for the drop after that, right? Get to that level. I don't even think we necessarily need to break the stop. 
Maybe. But we could come and make a much deeper consolidation here like this before we go break that up. Let's see. When it gets there, we'll deal with it. But first, it's going up. So if we want to buy, buy this. This flat is finished. That is over. You're making a bigger one here. You go with this bigger one. One, two, 15, yep. So this is the big, this is a smaller one here. This is a bigger one. I would go to contracting flat. I think it's worth it. It's a contracting flat as of now. A buy setup may be above this stop. Or if you get a really nice flag in here that you consider that will go. We're buying to come and break this stop and probably go higher above that. Then we'll see what happens. Cadian. Okay, this becomes a regular flat. One more up. And there's a big drop to come after that, right? Cadian also, this is the top. See, that's the top of this big move. This thing has been working its way up. A lot of flats, they have some huge one here and they have a very deep one, not a huge one, but a deep one. So that goal breaks the top. We'll pull this trend line like this, right? Changing trend line, go break the top and drop, but then it will have to go back up too. So put it in the 50, uh, 15 minutes. You do have a buy setup if you want. I'll probably let this come down somewhere and then get a buy setup to break the top, at least to break this top and like, very likely they'll break that one. So I'll be looking at a bigger running flat, but after that, it should be downside. So this should be a good trade. Depends how deep it comes back. You can go with a buy setup here. Aussie N also would be a buy setup because we have to go, go higher. We've got a flat here also. Like I said, if you think it's going to go higher, and I think they'll go higher, the risk would be better chance of buying Aussie Yen or, or you know, Aussie Yen or New Zealand Yen or the Acadia. But this has to go break this stop. So that pullback by itself doesn't mean anything much except, you know, a deep pullback within the structure to go up. I still think these will go. So the buy setup should be in the Aussie and New Zealand end mostly. I still think we're in this consolidation. So this might just go up a little here and come back down and then go. Wait for a good flags here and then there'd be better buy setup first. Euros. Okay, it did come down. It went a little lower. Go up. This is a perfect buy. Did that happen this morning or Friday? This one here. Anybody know when? Okay, did anybody got the trade? Let's see. We'll check when that happened. This was twenty second. It is twenty fourth. So that was Friday. This these were twenty four. This out. Oh, these happened this morning. Twenty second. This one was the Monday twenty fourth. This was already twenty fourth. Sorry, that's October. This, this, these, all of this happened this morning. Anybody got this trade? Any of you guys saw the simulation session or so? This is a very nice buy setup. We know where this is going. We got another buy here, by the way. Put an entry for a buy here. This one is kind of straightforward, right? You keep going up, take all of this out. You wanted to break that low, broke the low turn, go back up, big picture is upside. Can it go more? I think we can go more. I think we might end up making more. We'll have to figure out what this pattern is. We look at the whole structure again. Maybe we'll go with this running flat. All right, one, two, three. And this one is a one, two, three. This one is a sharp one. So you could probably go for a one, two, three here a smaller version of this one here. One, two, three, and the bigger flat in the middle. One, two, three. And then this one down was a single sharp one. That's possible. And now we go up. So this is a perfect buy setup. Let's see in the one hour how much hours we have there. Well, you only have one hour. Probably give it one or two more hours. See, this one is only three hours. So give it one or two more hours, get a flag, and then go for the upside. We would likely break out this time. Remember the last time this one didn't break out? This one didn't break out, so this one should probably break out. Hopefully, let's see. So I kind of like it. Let's see, I'll look for the buy setup. Let's go with the buy setup here. An aggressive buy, you can actually put an aggressive buy right now. That's a 15 minute flag. So we can stay with the aggressive buy. You're in New Zealand. Yeah, this should go back up. It actually dropped lower now, it's here. 
We're looking for the buy setup. All right, so this this gave us what we want. Now we want the, the buy setup to the upside. Let's see if we get it. This doesn't look like a buy setup. You do have a, a small flag here after this one. And this was a channel kind of a curving down there, right? So if we get a flag here, we'll buy. Wait for a flag buy. Yeah, this one is wait for a flag buy. Let's go Eurocat. Let's take this out. That might have been in Friday. That didn't go anywhere. And I think we will wait on this. It should come down. It's not coming there the way we want it to come down. They did make the sharp move back up and they're consolidating here. It might be a sell setup, but it might not come so fast and it might go really slow. So we'll wait and decide if we want to sell, but it most likely the sell setup. This most likely will drop and drop to this level. So we'll have to wait for that. Do we have a good sell setup on the one hour, let's say? Not really. Let's put this. And we wait on that because I don't like this cluster before that flag starts to form. It doesn't make sense. It's a sell setup, but we wait on that one. Euro Swiss. Okay, there's a chance we're coming down back with that divergence, but it might just be a correction. And not a very good chance of selling because of the deep pullback, right? See this? That's not a sell setup. So this will have to go back up, come back here. We'll get a big flat. We're most likely going to make a new high. Just a big correction and a new high. So can we trade in that range? Well, you'll have to see if you have buy setups within the range or sell setups within the range. If this makes a flag for a buy, you can take it for this trade up. We could also make the uh, assumption that this one is finished there. See this? Very likely it's finished there. So this is more of a one, two, three. Yeah, if we get a flag here, not this one. This one is already gone. Wait for this. And if it makes a flag here, take this straight to the upside. It could totally break out. It could make more flats in here, but it could also totally break out. I believe there will be more consolidation in there rather than break out. But it's a tradable range. 51, not that big, but you can work on it. See if we get a good flag. Europan. Okay. This is the problem. This could also be an expanding flat for one more up. See? It's trying to go down, but it's not going down as yet. So we can wait to see what happens here. If we get a very, very big flat here, see on the 50. Nothing, nothing tradable at the moment. You want this to come here, go back up there, make this flat, and then we look for sell setups. If we take this as the top, we're gonna to put this inside that pattern. It's gonna be a bigger expanding flat here. If we put, if we go with this as the top, this will become the bigger expanding flat. So there's a possibility that is the bigger expanding flat, and this one is making a flat. Here. What if this goes back up? Then we will probably stick to this one. Maybe go with a flat somewhere else, this one here. Go with this as an expanding flat for the upside. It does have a buy setup. We have a buy setup here. But that, within this move, that could be short-lived. If we assume that this is an expanding flat, then it makes sense. But then when it does that, if it starts to come down, you have to make sure you can get out for break-even. Only if you think you can get out for break-even, it's worth taking. Otherwise, that don't take the trade. Right, because the bigger picture is mostly downside. Pound Swiss. This was the aggressive sell. We closed that one. It was in this one here. We closed that for positive. Not the way we wanted it to drop, but close to positive. So let's take this out now. We're still within the consolidation. Take this out. We just assumed that it's finished. We haven't broken the low. Let's see. If we broke the low, we can make an assumption that that's a contracting, that's a flat. We didn't break the low, so we'll pull this line. And I don't think we have a contracting flat there. I wouldn't go with this, and this is a contracting flat. I would say we're still in the consolidation for upside. So we made one, two, three. OK. What if we have to look at it differently? Because then we don't have this as one, two, three as yet. If that's the case, this is upside. 
but in a contracting flat would be dangerous. I think we're just making a bigger, more, more complex consolidation. So we'll wait. Let's wait and see what this does. It looks more like a cell. Okay, we'll come back to the, the that contracting flat looks very possible, but let's wait and see what we get there and then we'll come back and decide if we get a buy. And the bigger picture is the buy. We just need this consolidation to complete itself properly, right? So if we see if it comes back to the bottom here and we don't get any, any cell set up, we'll just go with this one and take any buy setup we get. Right? If it goes up higher and we 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 don't, you know, if we go up higher, we can get any buy above the stop with a flag or right inside here, look for a flag and buy. So I'll look put wait for a buy setup. Let it drop with others, no problem. We'll wait for a buy setup. So I'll take this off. New Zealand, this one, it came a little lower. Now, I think we should look at this. This one is this flat. And we can still make an arg argument for that pattern. Or we can still make an argument for that, which means if we get a buy setup, we take the trade. I pretty much look like we're consolidating the top there. So if we get a buy setup here, do we have a buy setup? Nope, we had a small one here. Had a small one in the CD15. Yeah, you had a flag here and a flag here, but we'll have to wait for, those are gone, so we'll have to wait for a bigger consolidation. And better yet, if they break out of this structure. Right, if we break out of this and then make a flag, that will be the buy setup to the upside. So if we get that good, if not, it could still drop one more. Would we be looking at this as a bigger running flat? We could, this could be a flat of its own here too. So it could turn out to be a bigger running flat for more downside. If we get any, any drop of the flag will sell. I'll leave this like this, but any drop of the flag will sell for one more down. Okay. See what 15 looks like. This one didn't go up very much. You can put it like this. That's the best. That's the best we have. This was supposed to go higher, but you can go with that. That's the best. Could it possibly be something else? We still have this one. What if we put it to this one here? Then this becomes a smaller flat of its own. No, it doesn't really fit. It has to go like this. Most likely. Not the best patterns, but. That's what we have. Let's see in the bigger picture where it goes. Still going up. So the question is, where do we find the buy setup? Because we still have this hanging and we still are, we're still not sure about this running flat, um, contracting flat in that one. But here's the thing. We'll assume that that is a contracting flat. This is a smaller version of its own. You can go with this smaller correction. And any buy setup will take. So go to the 15. Well, this wasn't a clear one, but there was a buy setup. Wait for any buy setup now above the stop. One hour flag, we take the trade. Any one hour flag, we take the trade. And we'll see where that takes us. Wait for a flag. Punk ad. Okay, we broke out of this. Pull it like that. Take this out. I think we can pull this as the running flat. One, two, three. And now upside, All right? This was very similar to that one, upside. Wait for a flag by, we might get a flag here right now. Any pullback would make this flag, All right? Any pullback here would make this flat. And that becomes a buy setup. So we wait for it to pull back, we take the trade to the upside. Wait for a pullback, take the trade. Aussie, New Zealand. Oh boy, it's, it, it, it starts with the slow movement again, so not much you can do. You can trade it down if you want, but that'll be a headache. Aussie, CAD. 
okay, this didn't go very far. Take that out. It went a little down, come back up. Did we break the low? I don't think we broke out. If we, if we didn't break the low, then we have to go back to that being part of the correction. Uh, we broke the low here, but we didn't break the low in this one. Which just makes this whole piece very, very strange. Because we didn't break the low and we're going back up. So can we make this a more complex pattern? One, two, three, one, two, three, and one, two, three. Well, it's possible that this could be a more complex pattern. We'll have to wait for a flag here for a cell. It's making a running flat. You can make an argument for a running flat here. The downside. Oh, wait for it to consolidate more. If it goes up, higher we don't have a buy setup because this is not a flag but it's not even a, it's not even a flag for a buy but for a sell setup it makes sense so it's going to be an aggressive sell aussie swiss this one actually made a one two three and go back up so we pull it like this there's a huge problem with this one here because we haven't got any move we can put this one with I don't know, maybe we can put it with this here. Maybe we can do that, take this off. Put this one with that, that might make sense. And this is the final up move. Okay, let's see if we get a flag here. That would be a cell setup. If it makes a flag, we go with that pattern and put it to the cell. And the one or we don't have anything, we just have one candle, you need a flag. So you needed to stay here for a few hours and that's a cell setup. Wait for the cell setup. New Zealand Swiss. At some point it has to come down. So we'll go with this. I think we can put this one with this here. And this at some point has to come back here. I think we can go with that and see where when whenever this comes back. That weird big flat with a lot of structures inside is gonna probably go back up. Let's see if we get a cell setup from the top. Every time we break the top, look for a cell setup. We're gonna get a flag here, we'll take the trade. Wait to the 15. It's not a flag as yet. This is a separate one. Wait for this to make a consolidation and then we go for the cell. So you'll have to wait for the consolidation and then go for the cell. New Zealand CAD, same thing, same structure. Yeah, this one would also be a very complex one, a bigger complex one like this. Pretty much similar to this one here. So you got to move up, a pull back, a move up, a pull back, a move up. Look for a cell setup. All right, let's wait through the top there. Let's see if we get a cell setup from there. We do have a flat there. You got a final move. This one is not going down so aggressive. So can it go back up one more? Yeah, they can break the top again and then come back. We're not trying to get this last piece here. But once it turns, if it gives the cell set up, we can, we can go with the trade. Okay, this would have to come back at some point. Cat Swiss. Okay, this one didn't come down, but it didn't go up either. It just stopped and consolidates there. So let's take this off. Let's see what happens. If we go with this as a big flat forming here, let me see what it, what it looks like. If you take this here as a contracting flat, we're still within the structure. So if you go with this as a contracting flat here, that's the top, this is a flat by itself here. And for the first time, that's a downside structure. Wait for a flag, sell it. I'd see this is the bigger structure we're in. Let's wait for a flag, take the trade down. So this one would be coming down, but not from here. We have to move all of this a little. This one here will start from this point. It's still a downside. 
we should go back up. I still think we're upside. So if we look at this as a one, sorry, one, two, three, one, two. This one would have to be much bigger. This would have to be all the way to this top. So this does have a one, two, three inside. So this has one, two, three, and this one has one, two, three. So that makes sense. Take this off. We're completing that one. And now we're starting this one down, which would be this here. Yeah, I don't think we have to go that deep. We might end up somewhere here, yeah, somewhere there. And then we come that deep. So if you get this cell set up here, it's just a small trade here and then go back up to the top and then come back down. This could get all the way to the bottom here. Let's see. This one is a big complex pattern, right? Remember that. And we're in the B part of that bigger complex pattern. So we're in the cluster part of it. Once it's over, we get that move up. We get this move down and this move up. And then the downside. So go back and see if you can get a trade in there from when they're under 15 minutes or so to come down. That would be a cell setup. We'll wait for a cell setup. Natural gas. Yep, every cell you can take. Every flag. This one didn't pull back. So let's see where we put it. Just go by a standalone because it didn't pull back. So it'll be a standalone here. Wait for another one hour flag or so before you take trade. Maybe a bigger correction. And now you definitely want to wait for a bigger correction before you trade anything. We have to make sure that this is not a bigger expanding flag for upside, which would be hard to exclude. Let's see what happened to the oil cell. Pretty much right where it is. It hasn't gone anywhere. This just got bigger. I think that first one we closed, you're getting a second one here. Let's see this looks like in the 15. Okay, we're making a flat here. Don't sell us yet. This has to go back up. See this? Very likely we'll have to go back up there for this one. And then we'll get this flat for the sell setup. So if that happens, it would be a good sell. The buy to the upside is not there. So you would let it go back up or just let it go back up. Pretty much like this flat here. One, two, three, four, five. Then you come down, make a bigger one here and drop. I think we'd be careful of trying to sell it now. Can they drop without that pullback? Well, it has happened a few times, but I think we'll let it happen. I'll put this here. Let this come back here and go back up and then we look for the trade. Any sell in this case, let's just up your, up, assume it's still drop. Any sell would have to be a flag under here or a flag from the top coming down. So we can wait for a cell set up here. And should be the same thing, this one, right? Yep, same thing, wait for the cell set up. You're getting a big flat way at the top here. This one is not looking very good. I mean, in terms of if they go back up, they'll break this top. And if you break that up, you will come here, but then that is upside. So the sell might change from a sell to a buy. Right? And the buy could go back, probably all the way back to the top here. Just a much bigger cluster, let's see. We'll keep our eyes out this one. For, we'll keep our eyes on that one for, to see what structure it's making. S&P 500, remember we said, watch this here. It's going to likely go back up. Be careful of any sell that happens there. Turn out that's exactly what we have. So now we have this one. This is what we have. We have one, two, three, right? So what we want, we want this down. We want this, but to the downside. And then you want the upside. Nothing new, right? Pretty simple. Nothing new here. And then you want the upside. And when we get that, we'll decide at the top there, is it just a big correction for downside or are we trying to go up? Remember, we broke the low. And when they break the lows, they do make big flats and then take off. Could make a big flat here and then take off. 
So this is your trade. One sell, one single drop, take profit, get the hell out of it. One sell, one drop, take profit, get the hell out of it. Very, very aggressive. Same here, same here, right? Same, same structure, same picture, same everything. You're looking for this one down now. Give us this one and then upside. If you want, it's an aggressive sell. If you don't want, wait for it to come down and then look for the buy. This is this one is a little weird. It's not exactly the same thing. These two do look equal. This short one, this is very short. I probably wouldn't even trade it down. I'll just wait for it to come down and then go for the buy. Like literally wait for this to come down and then it come down somewhere here and then go for the buy. This would be a separate one. This would be this bigger flat. And we'll have to check, see what's the internal structure of it. This is not gonna be a big one. Well, it shouldn't be. Sometimes it could be bigger. They don't have to be equal, right? There's no rule as to them being equal. We're just assuming that they could be equal. And then upside, better to look for the upside on this one. I'd rather than the sell. Did we break this low? If we didn't break that low, then uh, this is definitely after the consolidation is downside. We hardly broke the low here. So even if this goes back up there, which we think it should do, then there's a good chance you could be totally coming down or you could even repeat this piece. And repeat this piece here go back up and then drop. It doesn't look upside if this is if this is not the low. So we'll have to check that and see. But if that is the low, well then yes, it could totally go up. I'll leave that out for now. DAX, well, it goes one more up, break that up, look for downside. I don't think we're going up very sharp. So start looking for the cell setup at once you break the top here. Let it go break the top first. Nifty. It makes a flat there, you can go for the trade. It's making a flat right now, a small one. Might be worth buying. If they do come back deep, then they'll go back up, but this will be downside. So it all depends. If it doesn't come deep, it's a good buy setup. So I would say go with an aggressive buy and see what happens. Put an entry above the top. Bitcoin. It didn't break the top. It could still go break the top, but it hasn't broken the top. So if you're putting any entry order, it has to be above the top. So don't put them lower, right? We could still be in consolidation and go down more. If they go down less, it go up. if they go down more, it could be just a bigger flat for downside, right? If they come back here and go back up, it's just a big flat for downside. Can we go with a contracting flat for downside? Possible too. ETH. Okay, this is the only one if you take it, it makes sense, but you should have taken it not from here, but from here. So if you take it now and it doesn't go, assume that they're doing this and they come back here. Okay, this one could still go up, but it's, it's kind of, you see, they're not breaking out of this. So this might just be one big expanding flat and downside. OMG didn't break out that's why you keep the entry above the top this actually looks more downside now this whole piece looks a lot more downside rather than upside do we have a contracting flat in there maybe we'll eventually find one or look or put one as a thing because if this drops or even if it go up now break the top it's not very aggressive pull that you want a sharp move up not a slow climb like this xrp didn't go up either so it's they're all looking downside again. Okay, this was the only one that broke out, right? This, and this had a very good buy setup here. All right, so you put an entry above this top here, that's going, if it doesn't go more, take it off. See, as soon as it goes a little more, put that to break even. 
Let's hope this is a flag for upside forming. This one turn up. Mm, no. No, put it here. What if we put this here? Okay, like this. One, two, three. This goes up, but it's becoming more of a flat now again. So it's, it's not impulsive, it's more flat. So take this out. It will probably go a little more, but then it's a flat for downside. Could also be a contracting flat, like this, and drop. But it would be better if they go up a little more, right? If it goes a little more, make a regular flat. Just go up a little more like this. Make a regular flat and then drop. ADA, downside. We're going with this one. Link. I think more downside. AMP. Or it's something like this. But it still looks downside, right? One, one, two, three, go back up maybe to this level and then drop. And this. Yeah, if you break this out, that's downside. Although this buy here would have been a really good buy. If you put the buy on, then wait for it to pull back like this, close it because it's looking more downside right now. And this. Well, whatever this is, is making a flat. So they'll come back here, go back there, come back here, go back there, and then drop. Looks more like a flat than a making, right? So we'll call that a day. So guys, just a quick reminder, make sure you register. And if you manage to watch this to the end, but you have not registered, go register, and I'll see all of you in the New York session, which will be in about an hour, 15 minutes. All right, so I see everybody there. I'll close this window. process. You guys can go into the trading room. We'll see those trades we're looking at and see if you can get them. I'll see you in the New York London session. Thanks for coming. Bye.